Hello, this is Ray Mora, and welcome to another edition of the Hot Seat. Recently, Juniper had a major announcement in the service provider core space. And what we tend to do in the hot seat is do a deeper dive and deeper analysis. Joining us today is Mike Marcellin from Juniper Networks. Thank you, Mike. Right. Thanks. Good to be here. Appreciate it. Regarding this announcement, Mike, what I want to do, as you know what we do in the hot seat, is we gather some of the feedback and some of the questions from some of these equity analysts as well as some of the service providers. Could you just clarify a little bit on the announcement a little bit? Sure. So what we announced uh, was something that we're calling the Converge Supercore, which is really uh, an architecture uh, that we uh, you know, believe will solve the challenges that service providers are facing now and with exponential traffic growth uh, that they'll face going forward. And, and really the announcement had um, you know, three primary components. Uh, the first component was new purpose-built silicon that we developed and we call it the Genos Express chipset. Uh, and you know, we really have optimized that silicon for really high capacity and really for MPLS transport. So we've got specific transport algorithms in there and that's able to give us the types of um, you know, huge efficiencies that we uh, are able to see. So the silicon is the first piece. The silicon then sits within a new uh, hardware system that we call the PTX series. So that stands for packet transport switch. Um, and so that's the, uh, that is really kind of the um, cornerstone of the new Converge Supercore. And then the last piece was all around software. Uh, and, and that really goes to, uh, in two different dimensions. The first is Junos, which as you know, um, you know really powers uh, all of our systems. And so um, because we're bringing together uh, packet transport and optical capabilities into a single system, having Junos run across both of those is something that's unique in the industry. So Junos is one part of the software story. The other part is network management. Um, and, and that's really a challenge for service providers today as they're looking at managing their core networks. And so having a common network management system uh, to run it all uh, is, is also part of the announcement. Okay, great. Now, um, there was a lot of mention about the performance. We heard numbers of 10 times the performance. We always like to get a clarification on the math versus some of the feature sets. Could you clarify that for the audience? Sure, so we had a number of different uh, performance metrics that we talked about. Um, we talked about 10, 10 times the overall uh, capacity, and that's really based on the breakthrough that we had with the Genos Express chipset uh, and the ability that that's going to give us to drive up to 3,800 uh, terabits uh, per second of, of overall capacity. You compare that to the largest uh, core platforms that are out there today, and it's more than 10 times that. Uh, the other uh, numbers that we talked about are four times the, four times the speed. Uh, and so that's really founded on the initial shipping of 480 gigs per slot. Um, you know, we talked a few months back about the uh, about our, our uh, T series platform, and that was breaking new ground at 240 gigs per slot, uh, more than double the, the other competitor platforms. This doubles that again to 480. So that's where we come up with the the four times. The other uh, interesting thing, though, is that um, we're doing all of this with one third of the power consumption of the leading platforms out there. So that's you know based on um, you know based on the standard power consumption metrics that. Um, you know that, that are looked at, so it's you know kind of watts per gigabit uh, as the metric there. So, um, so, so yeah, we're pretty pleased at the overall performance and, and you know the, the the green elements as well. Okay, good. So there's a good green component of there. Absolutely. Now, uh, from an architectural perspective, because it looks a lot of this is from an architectural play. Looking at what some of the carriers are looking at the roadmap, how does this align? How do you see some of these features map to some of those requirements? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. It's, it, it is an architectural discussion. And, um, you know, so if you think about how core networks have evolved over time, you know, they're really the same now that they've been for 10 years or more. Um, and cores, you know, cores, you know, have the you know, underlying transport layer. They have some level of circuit switching for circuit traffic. And then they have some kind of packet switching, usually an IP MPLS layer. So fundamentally, most cores today have three di different network topologies. Um, and so that means you've got you know, three different, uh, you, know, uh, you know, you have to care for uh, redundancy three different ways. You know, you have to you grow the network in three different ways or, or three, in three different places. When you provision services, you've got to think about that in three different um, places. Uh, you typically have systems that do all of that um, and they're usually different for all three layers. And, and in a lot of carriers, you have three different groups that manage those right. individual networks. So when we took a step back and said, what architecture is required to power this network into the future? We're seeing exponential traffic growth, and we're seeing 
quite a shift in traffic variability, okay. right? So, um, you know, with users going mobile, with shifts to the cloud, more demand on the network from a, a pure traffic volume perspective, but also that traffic is, is highly variable. Um, so when things are highly variable, a circuit switch model doesn't typically play out that well. And that's, and so, so traffic is, is, is moving more to IP. Um, so MPLS becomes a, the technology that really allows you to manage that variability and to get the most out of your network resources so you're not you know, uh, over-provisioning to, to hit those peaks. Um, and and so, so we said, look, a fundamental architecture is needed. Why not collapse those layers into a single system um, that does the best of MPLS switching um, uh, but also, you know, allows you to have you know integrated optics, so you can interface with that layer, um, and then you know the performance right. benefits that we just talked about that that, that, that the silicon is able to, to drive. So you know that's really the discussion, and so we see this. You know, we call it a converged supercore because it converges those layers, uh, and then what we see it a, a, allowing a service provider to do is to take their existing IP MPLS layer and really you know, push that out to you know, an outer core or to the edge uh, and use that for the rich services that IP does so well. Right, right, I see. Yeah. Now from a time frame perspective, um, it looks like there's different pieces of this announcement going on. Could you just clarify on the time frame and the shipment on some of those uh, capabilities on the router? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, so, you know, our roadmap is really driven by the, the requirements that we hear from our customers and we've talked to you know, network service providers, content service providers, and they're all you know, really excited about both the new architecture you know, and believe that it's the right approach, um, but also excited about the product offering itself. And so, really see this in two phases. The first phase that will be uh, beta testing in third quarter of this year, uh, and then uh, shipping in first quarter 2012, is really the, uh, the, the hugely scalable MPLS switch, right? And so that really has applicability across all of the customers that I, that I mentioned. Uh, and then the next phase will be uh, where we bring in the integrated optics um, to get really down to that true converged super core, bringing all the layers together. So that's really the two phases that we see. Okay, great. Well, Mike, thanks for being part of the Hot Seat. Absolutely, enjoyed it. With Mike Marcellin, this is Ray Moda, and thanks for joining this edition of the Hot Seat.